What do you mean you can have a bank without bankers? What do you mean you can have, <laughs> you know, you can have an exchange without people? What, you know, you know, to them, this is alien concept because it is really the antithesis of the existing system. So they've never been comfortable. And then they use the ridiculous KYC AML thing, which really all KYC AML is to increase tax takes. So everyone has to declare everything. That's really what that's about. It wasn't really about terrorism financing and stuff like that. It's really about they need to know where your money is at all times so you can't leave the system. And I think it's to create speed bumps. You know, the SEC kind of often knows it's going to lose, but it does it to slow the whole industry down. Mm -hmm. The cryptocurrency sector in the United States is currently under intense scrutiny as regulatory agencies step up their oversight efforts. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC, has taken a particularly firm stance, evidenced by its recent issuance of a Wells notice to Uniswap Labs. This notice, which suggests possible enforcement actions for operating as an unregistered exchange and broker-dealer, is part of a broader pattern of stringent regulatory actions that also target other major crypto players like Coinbase and Kraken. Uniswap Labs, known for creating Ethereum's largest decentralized trading platform, finds itself at the heart of this regulatory storm. In response to the SEC's actions, Hayden Adams, the founder of Uniswap Labs, expressed a mixture of defiance and concern, indicating his company's readiness to engage in a lengthy legal battle, potentially escalating to the Supreme Court. Do you want this to go to the Supreme Court? Just because, um, like, hey, let's just settle this? I, I would, I mean, it depends on what you mean by want. I, what, I, what I want is, <laughs> I think that the technology that we build is, is good for the world. We think it's empowering. We think it, you know, creates fairer, uh, you know, more transparent systems, more secure systems. Uh, and we want our, and we think that our technology should be used and widely adopted. Um, and if that means we have to take this to the Supreme Court, we will. This situation highlights a growing frustration within the crypto community regarding the SEC's perceived lack of clarity and reluctance to offer viable compliance pathways for crypto businesses operating legally within the U.S. This incident is just one example of the SEC's broader clampdown on the crypto industry. Ethereum developer Consensus also received a Wells notice concerning its MetaMask wallet, as the SEC looks to classify Ether as a security. Like Uniswap Labs, Consensus has robustly denied any misconduct and is prepared to challenge the SEC's position vigorously. The implications of these regulatory actions are significant. They not only challenge the operational frameworks of the affected companies, but also create substantial uncertainty and concern among investors and developers about the future of crypto innovations in the U.S. In response, some industry leaders are considering relocating to more crypto-friendly jurisdictions, such as the UAE. Figures like Rao Pal of Real Vision suggest that the U.S.'s tough regulatory measures may be a strategic effort to retain capital within traditional financial systems, potentially at the cost of stifling a burgeoning technological sector. These developments occur against a backdrop of rapid evolution in the global cryptocurrency market, with new technologies and financial products continuously challenging existing regulatory frameworks. The SEC's aggressive regulatory approach could deter innovation and prompt a talent and capital exodus to regions with more supportive regulatory climates. This ongoing tension highlights a critical debate over the balance between regulation and innovation, a debate that extends beyond mere compliance to the very future of financial technology. As the regulatory landscape continues to evolve, the outcomes of these legal confrontations will likely set significant precedents for the treatment of decentralized technologies worldwide. With industry leaders poised to defend their innovations and the SEC maintaining its rigorous stance, the path forward is laden with legal complexities and potential shifts in global perceptions and regulations of cryptocurrencies. The continuing developments will be crucial for the U.S. as it seeks to maintain its status as a hub of technological innovation. Almost every other central bank in the world of, of certain size is working on CBDCs. The U.S. won't because it's terrified of making the move. And the U.S. has a history of this, and I wrote some threads about this in the past. So after the U.S. left the gold standard, right, everybody now needed to 
exchange currencies with each other. And the US was like, well, we don't really want to be involved in this because they were worried about what was going to happen to the dollar. So the UK started the foreign exchange markets and it became the biggest market the world has ever seen. And the UK dominated that market ever since. Second was the second one was the offshore lending in dollars. So the US was really worried about dollar circulation outside of the US. Didn't know what, how to deal with it. Same thing with a reserve currency, we're on to fuck this up. So they just basically restricted um, US bank lending to various entities. So the UK started the euro dollar market, which is the offshore dollar market. And it siphoned through other global banks. It became the largest market the world has ever seen. The US missed all of those. So that's why LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate, is the interest rate for the entire world, or was until they've just changed it to SOFA. Then it happened again in the very late 80s, where the derivative market in the US was basically the Sh uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Chicago Board of Trade. But then the swaps market was developed and it was an OTC market and it required bank regulatory capital. The US regulators, to protect their own exchanges, said, you're gonna we're gonna make it so hard for you to do that you're not able to. So the UK started the swaps market, which then became the whole deriv OTC derivative market, which was based out of the UK, which became a $1.4 quadrillion market. So the US has a history of doing this in its fear of screwing up. I get it, you're the incumbent. You've got a fear factor. The UK has a innate ability to arbitrage that. So they see the opportunity. That's why the city of London is so big. The UK stock market's small. It's because they took all of the business from the US. And what was very interesting is they see the US fumbling the ball yet again with crypto. And the UK stood up and said, we want to regulate this properly. We want to bring it here to the city and we want to turn this into a huge market. In a decisive response to what it views as regulatory overreach, Consensus has launched a legal challenge against the US Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, by filing a lawsuit in a Texas court. The lawsuit contends that the SEC is improperly attempting to regulate Ethereum as a security despite previous indications from the agency that it did not consider Ethereum to meet the criteria of a security. This legal battle marks a critical juncture for the future of cryptocurrency and could significantly influence the regulatory landscape for digital assets in the United States. The crypto community has rallied around consensus, perceiving the SEC's recent maneuvers as an undue extension of its regulatory reach, which could potentially hamper technological innovation. Lex Sullen, a former Consensus employee, emphasized the collective responsibility of all Web3 stakeholders to resist such encroachments, highlighting a moment of solidarity and resistance within the industry aimed at preserving the decentralized foundations of cryptocurrency. This confrontation is part of broader concerns articulated by figures such as Rao Powell, who argues that the SEC's stringent measures are less about investor protection and more about maintaining the U.S.'s control over the global financial system. Powell suggests that the U.S. is using selective enforcement to advantage domestic entities like Coinbase over foreign competitors like Binance. He views the approval of cryptocurrency-based ETFs by U.S. regulators not as a defeat, but as a potential accelerant for cryptocurrency adoption, despite the regulatory challenges posed. Powell also points to the geopolitical implications of the U.S.'s restrictive regulatory stance, contrasting it with other countries that are embracing cryptocurrencies and creating innovation hubs. This includes nations like Dubai, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, which are actively courting crypto talent and positioning themselves as leaders in the digital economy. This global divergence underscores a broader race for technological and economic dominance in the emerging digital landscape. The U.S. regulatory approach is further complicated by domestic political dynamics, with figures like Senator Elizabeth Warren expressing skepticism about cryptocurrencies. This stands in stark contrast to the proactive approaches of other regions, which see cryptocurrencies as an opportunity to secure a strategic position in the future digital economy. 
despite these challenges, Rao Pal remains optimistic about the inevitable integration of traditional finance with cryptocurrencies, viewing it as a transformation that will fundamentally shift economic power structures. He suggests that while U.S. regulators may try to set boundaries, the global nature of the industry and its inherent resistance to centralized control will continue to fuel its growth. The legal standoff between consensus and the SEC represents more than just a dispute over the classification of Ethereum. It is indicative of a larger struggle in the U.S. to find a balance between fostering innovation and imposing regulatory controls. As this legal and political drama unfolds, the outcomes will shape not only the future of Ethereum and other digital assets, but also the role of the U.S. in the next era of the global financial system. The united front presented by the crypto industry against perceived regulatory overreach speaks to the sector's maturing resilience and readiness to redefine the boundaries of technology and finance.